and one. Hello and welcome to The Public Good. This is Sam McGovern from the Partnership for the Public Good, or PPG, which unites over 275 community organizations working to build a better Buffalo. Delighted to be joining you every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on Power 96.5 FM and Mix 1080 AM, and every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Uh, here on Facebook Live. Today we'll be joined by Moshe Douglas and Cameron Jackson from Peace and Parmesan. We'll be talking about their entrepreneurial work starting a creative group uh, and some of the challenges and their success so far in doing that. Don't forget to follow PPG on Facebook and Twitter and of course you can always get great information on our website ppgbuffalo.org. The Public Good is sponsored in part by Univera Healthcare, real people who really care. Video from the show can be found on our Facebook page and you can find highlight videos from each week's show on our YouTube channel. A few quick announcements for you. On Saturday, August 18th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., the African Heritage Food Co-op will be doing a no vendor fee black business bazaar and mobile farmers market event. That's Saturday, August 18th, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Vendors will be asked to give away $50 worth of product to single moms instead of doing a vendor fee. This will be at the Johnny B. Wiley Recreation Center at 1100 Jefferson Avenue. You can get more information from the Facebook event page, No Vendor Fee, Black Business Bazaar, and Mobile Farmers Market. Uh, this Thursday, August 2nd, 6.30 to 8.30 p.m., the Pride Center of Western New York will be doing a meet and greet at Shakespeare in Delaware and Park. It's called Urge to Merge. It's Shakespeare in the Park with the Pride Center, 6.30 to 8.30 this Thursday, August 2nd, and you can find out more information about that uh, at the Facebook event page, Urge to Merge Shakespeare in the Park. And lastly, on Thursday at 5 p.m., uh, the Western New York Peace Center will be doing a vigil outside the ICE building at the corner of Delaware and Chippewa. Bring your signs and a spirit of solidarity. You can find out more about that from the Western New York Peace Center doing a vigil this Thursday, 5 p.m., outside the ICE building at Delaware and Chippewa. All right, with that, I want to welcome Moshe Douglas and Cameron Jackson to the show. Thanks for being here. Yes. Okay. With the creative group Peace and Parmesan. Yes. Uh, and that uh, you all are designing clothes, but you were telling me more than that, it's about a lifestyle. Uh, but let's start with the clothes. So tell me a, a little bit about the, the clothes that you've designed. Mm. Um, yeah, we spoke briefly about it, you know, but started with the clothes in April 2016. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like I said, it was just a, a collective of thoughts from my past that then it came all together in April. So I decided to push forward with it mm -hmm. with a positive message, um, starting with the name, you know, Peace and Parmesan. Yeah, I, so so explain the name for us. How did you come up with Peace and Parmesan? Um, I was always a person I was into unification and just getting together. Networking was always my thing from mm -hmm. youth. So peace was like a given for me. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to add something else. So I wanted something relatable to people, you know, and Parmesan was a rich, is classified as a rich and sharp cheese, mm -hmm. you know, and I want people to think rich and sharply, making mm -hmm. the best decisions they can. He's a chef. Nice. Yeah. And you're also, you're a chef also? As yes. Well as, uh, Ex chef right here? now, you know, I'm leaning more towards art, but you know, once mm -hmm. a chef, always a chef. So. Yeah. yeah. So if people go to the website, pizzaandparmesan.com, yes. they can see some of the clothes that are for sale. Yes. Give me a little description of some of what folks will find there. Um, you'll find a lot of graphic tees, um, you know, a lot of short sleeve shirts for the summer season. Mm -hmm. um, some long sleeve shirts. I got a couple hats I'm going to have to put up soon. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just comfort clothing. Yeah. You know. should also give out the Instagram, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. On Instagram, you can find us at Pizza and Parmesan. Um, you can Google it. Mm -hmm. Some links over there. Nice. Mm -hmm. And with that, mm -hmm. it's not just the clothes, but you'll see the diversity mm -hmm. and, the, and the people that's wearing the clothes. Right? Yeah. And that's a big part of it. Uh huh. You don't just see one type of person. Yeah. yeah. It's just for everybody. Yes. So, Moshe, you just graduated from your B, and Cameron, you've got one year left. Yes, sir. Um, tell us a little bit about starting a business while you're still in college. Most people yeah. are, are not, uh, you know, <laughs> not thinking that far ahead or not. Not that dynamic. So, yeah. how did you manage to start your own company while you're still in college? Tell us a little um, bit about that process. Trial and error, number one. That's the first thing that came to mind, mm -hmm. you know, because I knew nothing about starting a business. I'm just a student, you mm -hmm. know, so, but I knew what I wanted to do. Yeah. And I was 
willing to find a way to do it, you mm -hmm. know. So um, coming up with the product um, was all done online, mm -hmm. you know. So online, and then once you have a product, you can sell it. You know, mm -hmm. you can you can auction it off, and you just put a price on it. And yeah, it got a lot of good feedback. Mm -hmm. You know, just like that, and I know a lot of people probably, you know, don't go through that. But I just knew yeah. a lot of people. The people knew me for my good energy. So uh -huh. once I brought the product, they's like, "Oh, this is Moshe's doing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's let's do it." Mm -hmm. And once I seen the potential in it, it just kept me going. Nice. That's also the the benefit of a college campus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Places where you have so many people willing to yeah. gravitate to something. Yes. Yeah. A lot of people wait till after they have a degree to say, okay, now I can start. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you already have an idea, if the spirit is already yeah. moved, it's nothing to say you can't do this now. Right. Use this as an incubator. Yeah. Did you two, did you find any mentors or resources mm -hmm. or people or places that were able to help you along the way? Um, as far as starting off, shout no. out Jeff. <laughs> Oh yeah, Jeff. Jeff is definitely. We actually met at a screen printing class, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, but I've been doing like the heat press thing prior, but screen printing was a new technique for me to make mm -hmm. clothing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Jeff Jeff Shervin definitely shouts out to him. There was mm -hmm. a lot of questions I, I passed through his way. Yeah, he's very knowledgeable in that field. Is that the professor who taught the class? Or no, that's oh. he's he's. He's, he's a technician. Yeah. He's, he's just the guy. guy. He's a technician in UV uh -huh. in the arts department. Okay. But he was he's yeah. he yeah, he's the guy. He's just mm -hmm. there for you when you need nice. questions. Yeah. He'll let you use the lab after hours. Yes. Uh -huh. Just make sure yeah. if, you, if you have something to do, he's mm -hmm. not gonna have anything stop you. Yeah. Yeah. How about on the kind of business side of things in terms of oh, yeah. learning <laughs> how to run a business? Any resources? Like if someone out there is saying, I wanna do this too, but I don't know where to start, like yeah. have um, you found some things you know, that helped? Just that's, that's another thing with trial and error, you know, experience mm -hmm. is the best teacher, you know, because when you young, and I was, I guess I was young at the time, I'm still young, but it's mm -hmm. like, when that much money is coming in your direction, I, I, like I said, I wasn't, I'm not a business person, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, a art, I'm an artist, so it's yeah. like, when I was getting the money back, it was like, oh, this is my money, and mm -hmm. I wasn't thinking to invest some money back in the brand, so mm -hmm. I was just going on trips, and mm -hmm. but still coming out with products, but I was just spending the money as mm -hmm. if it was mine and not the brand's. Mm -hmm. So that came with trial and error. Just YouTube is another. Mm -hmm. I say, YouTube is like Big Brother, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. So <laughs> YouTube will teach you anything you need to know. So once I was like, yo, I have to do better with this. Mm -hmm. YouTube mm -hmm. is that was my instructor. Yeah. yeah. How do you want to grow it? Where would you like to go with Peace and Fire Machine? Um, everything. Um, clothing, I still want to do clothing in the future because mm -hmm. I, I enjoy fashion. Mm -hmm. um, like I, I talked to you about, I want to do a nonprofit. You know, I want to help homeless people. That's like my, my biggest thing. I mm -hmm. want to help the needy, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's food, you know, shelter. Just I just need, I want to help. That's yeah. what I feel like I'm on this earth for, for helping. You know, I want to have like radio shows, music, mm -hmm. real estate, you mm -hmm. know, and just anything, everything. I want to do everything, whatever I can do. You told me you had an opportunity to help already with some clothing that right. you donated. Tell us about that. Right. I had two friends, um, a friend I went to school with prior to UV named Kenny, Kenny Anuku. He went to Nigeria and he gave clothes. I gave him a box of clothes and mm -hmm. he donated. I have some pictures of those that I put on the website. That was pretty dope. And another friend, um, Adenam, I forget his last name, but he went to Ghana and mm -hmm. he did the same thing. You know, because they're not as fortunate as us. And it's like, I wish I could put food down there, you mm -hmm. know, but it was like, mm -hmm. I gave what I had, and I had a lot of clothes. Yeah, know? nice. Yeah, so when you were growing up, what were some of your inspirations that made you mm -hmm. want to become an entrepreneur? <laughs> um, first and foremost, like, God is my inspiration, you know. I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to get religious on this, you know, mm -hmm. but God is definitely my biggest number inspiration. One. Yeah, mm -hmm. number one. Um, and... Everything is my inspiration, to be honest. Like, it's hard, I'll, I'll be selfish to just pinpoint certain things, mm -hmm. you know, because every day I get inspired by things. Yeah. You know, can inspire me, that's why he's here, mm -hmm. you know. You inspire me, we just know about each other. You, you're running something, mm -hmm. you inspire me, you know. She's saying she's so busy, like, mm -hmm. so it'll, I'll be selfish to be like, okay, yeah. Jimi Hendrix, Pharrell, like, you mm -hmm. know, because everyone, you know, you yeah. just, everybody got something to, to, to um, some truth. Learn. Everybody yeah. got some truth. Yeah. Cameron, you're telling me you moved up here from Memphis. What's it been like for you in Buffalo so far and going to the university here? Uh, How's your experience a, it been? It was an adjustment. Mm -hmm. I mean, just down to the way you talk, 
dress, the act, mm -hmm. food you eat, mm -hmm. you know, and that's that's something that we could relate on. Mm -hmm. Our whole circle is people that, from some circumstance, moved around, mm -hmm. had some type of diverse method of growing up, mm -hmm. and you know, we got people that's photographers, and graphic designers. Uh, dancers, mm -hmm. hairstylists, mm -hmm. and you see them all wear the clothes. Mm -hmm. We got a friend, Joe, he's in the Netherlands right now for graphic design. Mm -hmm. Probably wearing Pizza Parmesan. Nice. Like, you know, and so you found a whole kind of scene here yeah, uh, with lots yeah. of different creative people yeah. that have some things in common, even though they're doing different types of work. Right. Yeah, that's good to hear. It's good to know that that's happening in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, how about What's your experience of the university been like? Have you been able to find find people? That's what you make it. You know. uh -huh, sure. It can be it can be trash if, if you're being trash if you have a trash mm -hmm. mentality, mm -hmm. you know. And once we change the perspective and say, okay, we want to grow, we want to expand ourselves in, in the best way we can, mm -hmm. the doors just start opening. Yeah, the stuff was already there. You know. Yeah. Now, Moshe, you just graduated. Mm -hmm. What was your major? Graphic design. Graphic design. Yes. And is that what your major would be also, Kaylee? Yeah, music okay. and graphic design. Music and as well. Yeah. Okay. So you making music now? Or you yeah. Uh huh. I'm, I started playing trumpet at UB before. I was doing mostly hip hop mm -hmm. production. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any formal music training. That's okay. a part of what we're about too, because you never know what you can do until you're exposed to it. Yeah. You know, so having a lot of different people around, we're just exposing each other to so much information mm -hmm. and then teaching it to people that don't have the access. Yeah. 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 So I know in the, in the class that you were part of, Moshe, you worked on some materials around affordable housing yes. and trying to bring your graphic design skills to uh, the, the crisis in housing in Buffalo and the, the people who can't afford their rent, uh, people getting evicted, people paying too much of their income toward their rent. Tell us a little bit about that. What's, what was the experience like of trying to bring your artistic talents to bear on a, a question of justice or a, a social problem? It was fun because, you know, we, we was dealing with a real company, PPG. We was mm -hmm. dealing with clients, mm -hmm. you know, so because a lot of us, it was like our first exposure with clients, you mm -hmm. know, and it was more interesting because it was real life. Like, yeah. it wasn't like okay, design a, a poster for a game, you know, mm -hmm. like, that's fantasy. Like, we was dealing with real life, real life problems, you know, yeah. and for me, it's like, I want to help. So it's like, wow, it's an opportunity to, to do something, you know, and for me, you think, like, graphic design or just any type of arts is kind of like a language, you know, and the job for us was to illustrate something to, like, to talk to people, something mm -hmm. that'll make mm -hmm make them be like okay what's this because it just like we talked about if you see a whole bunch of words it's like okay i see it's a whole bunch of words i don't know if i'm gonna read that mm -hmm. but now when you get into like graphic design or art with something visual it's like okay i see i've broken down houses let me let me see what this is about or let me see a red sign let me see what this is about you know it just brings more attention to a problem so yeah to incorporate that was like wow like yeah this is nice yeah so it's always interesting to talk to people who have experience of other cities. You growing up in New York City, you originally in Memphis, and then coming to Buffalo in your in your high school years. Um, we know a lot of the statistics. Buffalo's uh, sixth most racially segregated metropolitan area in the country. It's got really high levels of economic economic inequality. But as young people sort of coming in here from outside, how are you experiencing Buffalo? Are you is that are those inequalities? Uh, are you do you see them around you every day? Is that part of your lived experience? That you Education is probably the biggest. I mean, when I came here, I didn't know how the schools worked. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the difference between charters, mm -hmm. public, mm -hmm. semi-public. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, right. And so, mm -hmm. where all my friends and family went to Nichols, Ken West, things like that, I ended up at a pretty pretty beach charter school mm -hmm. no books you know no sports teams no mm -hmm. music mm -hmm. and then I learned okay it's, it's something different <laughs> you know mm -hmm. it's something different going on and yeah as far as racial differences I really don't think that there are a lot of like just inherently bad people I feel like mm -hmm. they just don't know mm -hmm. I feel like they're not exposed to each other 
Yeah. You know, it's pockets in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. But once you cross that line, you see what's really going on, the people will drop it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Are you finding ways and places to interact where people are coming together across different lines? And we, We're doing that in, in a small setting now. Yeah. Just people that we see at school and we will invite a person at a time. You know, we're having this event, like, come mm -hmm. through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we'll see how they interact and how they change afterwards. Yeah. And as we learn to make ourselves stronger and better, we can try to do it on a bigger scale. Yeah. But we we got to fix ourselves first. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it starts with the self. Let's yeah. talk a little bit about the creative process. So how do you go about designing uh, your clothing? Um. Like I said, I get inspired by something. Like it's not like I have a a set schedule. Like okay, I want to do this in the spring, this in the fall. Mm -hmm. Like it may be a small idea, but like say if I was to shirt. see, yeah, it can be a shirt for mm -hmm. instance. Okay, I like how the blue works with the gray. Mm -hmm. So then that will be in my mind, and then I'll probably see something else, and then oh, I like the square. So then I I'll just start put, putting things together until you know I'll make something. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's it's just it's it playful. Just works. Yeah, it's playful every day, but mm -hmm. I'll make it make sense. Yeah. You know, and with all the shirts, I put a quote on a rib, you know, mm. and it'll be some inspirational quote, mm. like mm. whether it's, it's from me or whether it's from someone famous, you know, mm. I'll put a quote, a gem, I call them gems, mm. I'll put a gem on a rib. Mm -hmm. So, you know, once the person's wearing the clothes, it kind of equips them with a certain attitude. Mm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And are you sitting there with a pencil and paper, with a computer? What's your kind of process it, like? The best way I do is on a pencil and paper, you know? Mm -hmm. um, try to sketch something out first. Mm -hmm. Or write down some, some good colorways, and then I do it on a computer, and then that's mm -hmm. how it comes to life. Yeah. How about you, Cameron? What's your creativity like? What's your Pretty process? Pretty much the same. Uh -huh. You're chilling, and you get the idea, you act on it. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that... Like, he puts the gym on the ribs mm -hmm. for an attitude reminder. And the thing that we want to get to people also is that it, anybody can do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's not it's not a hard thing to do. You just got to let yourself have fun. Mm -hmm. Don't take yourself so serious. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. This is art. If you like the thing, it's easy. You're yeah. a lawyer. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You, you, you do this. It's not hard for you to get out of bed, ideally, mm -hmm. you know? So when it comes to what we make, it's just another expression. Yeah. That's where the lifestyle comes in. You know? Yeah. Now, did you both grow up doing art from a real early age, or did you come to it later in life? Um, I was always a handsy person. Legos was probably my favorite toy. Mm -hmm. So I was always creating things mm -hmm. from young and always drawing in dictionaries and um, drawing in like my mom's textbooks, so like I was always like drawing and like building it from young. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about you? Yeah. Um, I was a, I'm an only child, and most schools that I've been to have been not engaging. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so just uh, music was just the thing that stimulated me the most. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and painting and things like that. You're listening to The Public Good here on WUFO. We're talking with Cameron Jackson and Moshe Douglas from Peace and Parmesan. Yes. Uh, they design clothes, but they also uh, are designing more than that. They're uh, designing a lifestyle. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you, can, you can check it out at peaceandparmesan.com, or you can find them on Instagram. Uh, so let's talk a little more about um, entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So... Um, if, if you had a, a, a younger brother or sister yeah. in high school and you're trying to explain to them what it means to like own your own business, mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about kind of what that means to you and, and what advice you might offer to someone. Um, this is so relevant because as I was doing it during the process of starting this, it was a lot of not little brothers but friends that was trying to get into mm -hmm. something also. Mm -hmm. And the number one thing I was always telling them was don't do it for the money. Mm -hmm. like do it because you want to do it do it because you want to send a message you know and that's the first thing I'll, I'll tell somebody yeah. you know because it's not about money like mm -hmm. you would never see um, a hearse with a um, what, what they call it those moving trucks mm -hmm. ah damn I forget but you can't take everything with mm -hmm. you you uh -huh. know what I'm saying uh, after you've a gone. hearse with a U-Haul yeah with a U-Haul yeah. <laughs> yeah. you, you'll never see gotcha. a hearse with a U-Haul yeah. behind it you know yeah. <laughs> Right. Um, 
So it's not about the money, yeah. you know. It's it's about our lives and what can you do and what footprint you leave on the earth, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. But definitely that, and just do your research on whatever you want to do, and it's gonna come with a lot of trial and errors. It's mm-hmm. gonna come with tri- like it's mm-hmm. not everything is just not gonna be peachy. You yeah, know? and as we're saying this, it's also we're acknowledging that it's not easy to change your mentality. It's mm-hmm. easy to operate once you've changed it, but it's not easy to change the mentality in mm-hmm. the beginning because mm-hmm. when you come from a certain background, you might be the first one to go to college. Mm-hmm. So there's a certain responsibility that you feel like you have to have. Like it is about the money. Mm-hmm. You can't see past that, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And that kind of runs you into a corner. So when you get shown the alternative of how your passion and your message can get you what you need. Yeah. You know? Right. It's not always about what you want. Yeah. When you can get what you need by what you can contribute, that's what we're trying to show people. Let's talk about college for a minute. So there's a lot of discussion right now. Um, in Buffalo, we have Say Yes that's helping record numbers of Buffalo High School and yeah. school students go to college. I'm an ambassador for uh, You're an ambassador for Say Yes? Yeah. Uh, awesome. Uh, so there was an article in the newspaper recently about... Um, Oh, shout out Dave, <laughs> shout out Allison, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> um, some of the challenges once people get to college, that the, the job isn't done once you get someone admitted to college because a lot of people drop out. So talk a little bit about the challenges of staying in college and how you all have surmounted those. What, what are some of the things that come up that lead people to drop out and how have you got past Ooh, those? That's easy. <laughs> <laughs> that's easy. Yeah. Um, a lot of schools, it, it depends on where you where you come from because I notice it in people that went to private schools too. It's certain things that need to be developed before you get to college. Mm-hmm. This is an amazing place where so many resources are available, but if you weren't taught how to go seek information mm-hmm. and think for yourself, you're going to fall to the wayside or you're going to do what people are doing around you yeah. to feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. So if you get a chance through Say Yes or something like that that gives a kid from a uh, poverty background, urban background, mm-hmm. you put them in college, they have more resources than they ever know, mm-hmm. but nobody showed them what to look for. Yeah, You get what I'm saying? Yeah you're gonna fall right back into similar habits. Mm -hmm. And there's usually nobody from where you're from that can tell you what to look for, Yeah, you know? Yeah. So, it's tricky, Yeah. you know? People from private backgrounds, they they don't get certain social things. Mm -hmm. They don't connect with the people that came from other backgrounds. Mm -hmm. They stay in their pocket and they move on and you know that that works how it works. Yeah, tell us what what do you what what does it mean to be a say yes ambassador? What do you do as a say yes ambassador? I keep doing me. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like uh-huh. that's all I can do. I'm not. Uh huh. I can't tell somebody the right way to do it because it's different for everybody. All mm-hmm. I can say is, yo, mm-hmm. these was the options I had. Yeah. And this is what I'm doing with it. I'm staying afloat. Yeah. We had the same issues. Yeah. You know. Moshe, as a recent graduate, do you have advice for people who are trying to make it through college? Um, yeah, you got to be yourself, but you got to understand yourself first. You mm-hmm. got to understand what you want. Um, a lot of people, they go to college because they, that they think that's the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. You know, they think that's what they're supposed to do. And it's like people, too, you know, they influence it, like Cam was talking about. Like, you can have influential people, and it's not always necessarily the right thing to do. But once you know yourself, it's like you'll be like, okay, this is what I want to do, and this is how I'm gonna go about it. So it's definitely a mental thing, and I think that's strong, and it's it's difficult too. That's why college is a learning process because a lot of people go, they jump into college straight after high school, yeah. and you know, in high school you're still young, you're not really exposed to certain things. So when you go to college and you see a whole a whole table full of things it's just like wow so some people that's why I see some people they lean towards drinking early or doing drugs early it's just mm-hmm. it's just so mm-hmm. much influence but they, they don't know themselves yet so yeah. they're trying to find that so yeah. so chef talk you <laughs> are what you eat right, right. Mm-hmm. a lot of people only ate bad food mm-hmm. 
So when you get to the college campus, it's a lot of different things on the menu, yeah. but you only ate junk food. Right. Now you're just about to have endless junk food. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. people people don't have they don't know how to structure their appetite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, well, we are running out of time. I uh, want to thank uh, Moshe Douglas <laughs> and uh, Cameron Jackson from Peace and Parmesan. You can check out their designs at peaceandparmesan.org or on Instagram. Uh, thanks for being on the show, gentlemen. Thank you for us. Appreciate it. Next week on The Public Good, we'll be talking about bail reform. It's The Public Good every Tuesday at 1 p.m. on Facebook Live and at 7 p.m. on WUFO. Power 96.5 FM and Mix 1080 AM. Thank you. Thank you.